Hello and welcome to The Nave. It is lovely to be with you again today and as always it is my genuine pleasure to welcome you to our worship today. You know it doesn't matter whether you're joining us live on a Sunday morning or whether you are watching this at some other point in the week. It really doesn't matter if you're here in Aberystwyth or whether you are somewhere uh, else in the world because you know while we might all be spread out and taking part through different screens and in different places we might be on our own or we might be with our family but each of us is welcomed, welcomed and loved by Jesus. We are united together by his love for us and by the power of his Holy Spirit. And so wherever you are today, we are glad that you found us and we are really looking forward to being able to worship alongside you. And we pray that through our songs and our Bible reading and our teaching today, that you truly feel the presence of God with you, that you will hear his voice and that by his spirit, he will minister to you and bless you with all that you need today. And uh, so, so as we prepare to sing our first song, shall we just take a moment uh, just to come before God, perhaps just to close your eyes or to, to hold your hands out if you find that helpful and just take a moment to still our hearts and our minds as we prepare to worship God and to allow his spirit to minister to us. Father God, we thank you. We thank you that you are an unchanging God. Thank you that your love is constant. It's a constant source of strength and life for us. Thank you that you are our provider, that every good gift that we have comes from your hand. Father, as we gather to worship you today, we just proclaim again that you are an awesome God. You are greater than we could ever comprehend or imagine. You are beyond any earthly word that we could use to describe you. And yet, and yet through Jesus, we know the intimacy of your great love for us. As we come before you now, we just want to place all those things that we might be struggling with, those things that perhaps would take our attention or focus away from you. Lord, we just want to take those things and place them at the foot of your cross. And we ask that you would take them from us. Father, we come to you today just as we are. And we ask that you would meet with us, that you would give us strength where we need it, that you would bring us healing where we are hurting, that you would bring us peace where we are consumed with anxiety or with anger, and that you would fill us with your joy. May your Holy Spirit surround us and move among us as we worship you, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
the words of the prophet Micah say this. They say, Who is a God like you, who pardons sin and forgives the transgressions of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but you delight to show mercy. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. Those are some really powerful words. And this is exactly the type of forgiveness that each of us is assured because of the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And so now let us come before God together in faith and confess our own failings and shortcomings to him. Most merciful God, we humbly admit that we need your help. We confess that we've wandered from your way and that we've done wrong and that we have failed to do what is right. You alone can save us. Have mercy upon us, wipe out our sins and teach us to forgive others and grow in us the fruit of the Spirit that we might live as disciples of Christ. We ask this in the name of our Saviour Jesus. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness of sins to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you to do his will and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we are going to head over to the stable to see what Hannah and Paul are up to. Hi, friends. We miss you. Hi, friends. Hope you're staying safe. How about some apparently impossible challenges, Paul? OK, let's hear them. Perhaps you could try them at home too. Now, don't be silly. We don't want you to hurt yourselves. But you can join in if you want. And if you do hurt yourselves, it's your own fault if you do. <laughs> can you fold an A4 piece of paper more than seven times? Can you bend your little finger without bending your ring finger next to it? I think I can do it with this hand, but not, not this hand. <laughs> can you wiggle your ears? Yes, I can wiggle my ears. Look. I definitely defy science by being able to wiggle my ears. <laughs> All these things are pretty tough though, right? Maybe they weren't for you. Bit like life for Paul and the Christians and Acts. Yeah, but they give us a really good example, don't they? They always seem to be seeking God first and trying to live in a way that honours God and other people. Thank you, Jesus, for their example. Mm, too right. And dear God, please help us keep honouring you and other people. Amen. Acts 21, verses 17 to 36. When we arrived at Jerusalem, the brothers received us warmly. The next day, Paul and the rest of us went to see James, and all the elders were present. Paul greeted them and reported in detail what God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. When they heard this, they praised God. Then they said to Paul, You see, brother, how many thousands of Jews have believed, and all of them are zealous for the law. They have been informed that you teach all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn away from Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or live according to our customs. What shall we do? They will certainly hear that you have come, so do what we tell you. There are four men with us who have made a vow. Take these men, join in their purification rites, and pay their expenses, so that they can have their heads shaved. Then everybody will know that there is no truth in these reports about you, but that you yourself are living in obedience to the law. As for the Gentile believers, we have written about written to them about our decision that they should abstain from food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. The next day, Paul took the men and purified himself along with them. Then he went to the temple to give notice of the date when the days of purification would end and the offering would be made for each of them. When the seven days were nearly over, 
some Jews from the province of Asia saw Paul at the temple. They stirred up the whole crowd and seized him, shouting, Men of Israel, help us! This is the man who teaches all men everywhere against our people and our law and this place. And besides, he has brought Greeks into the temple area and defiled this holy place. They had previously seen Trophimus the Ephesian in the city with Paul and assumed that Paul had brought him into the temple area. The whole city was aroused, and people came running from all directions. Seizing Paul, they dragged him from the temple, and immediately the gates were shut. While they were trying to kill him, news reached the commander of the Roman troops that the whole city of Jerusalem was in an uproar. He at once took some officers and soldiers and ran down to the crowd. When the rioters saw the commander and his soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. The commander came up and arrested him and ordered him to be bound with two chains. Then he asked who he was and what he had done. Some in the crowd shouted one thing and some another, and since the commander could not get at the truth because of the uproar, he ordered that Paul be taken into the barracks. When Paul reached the steps, the violence of the mob was so great that he had to be carried by the soldiers. The crowd that followed kept shouting, away with him. Good morning, lovely people. And it is so lovely to be back with you in the nave, back with you online. Um, before we go any further, let's pray. Father God, we give thanks for your word. And we ask now that where we are, who we are with, you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to hear the things that you want us to hear this day. Help us respond to the challenges that you lay for us and help us to turn away from the things that are not of you. In the name of Jesus, your son, we pray. Amen. Well, today for just a little bit of a change, Liz and I have come upstairs in this particular church today, St. Mike's here in Arboristwith, I guess to get a different view of the church. And you know what? I'm kind of pleased that we did. Um, I don't know what it is, but there's just something beautiful about being here and looking out with the lights off in the main body of the church there, but seeing the light that comes in through the main front window there, the altar window, and shining on the altar with the cross of Christ just shining so brightly. And it feels almost like a metaphor for the light of Christ, which shines in the darkness. And that has really challenged me today. And I wonder if you could just hold on to that image in your heads as we think about our reading today. But before we get there, I want to set the scene. And I want to talk about the town that I grew up in. Many of you, if not all of you, will know already that I am from Merthyr Tydfil in South Wales. And I am very pleased to have come from that town. I love the town very much. I love the people there. My family are there. It is a wonderful place. And I will never hear a bad word said about it. That is just who I am. Now, these days, Merthyr is something of a thriving town. It has wonderful retail outlets, lots of office jobs which have moved in there. It's got great things out of town, lots of great community things going on, and it really is a great place to live, and a great place, if you will, to raise a family. I grew up in a slightly different town in that town, and I grew up at a time when in the 80s and 90s, there was mass unemployment, lots of poverty, and lots of problems. And during that time, problems that come with mass unemployment and poverty and so many other things were there and evident to be seen. I don't think I'm doing my hometown down by saying that in those days when I was growing up, Merthyr could be quite a rough place to be. There was violence. Schools sometimes felt like violent places, and at times it could be pretty scary. As for me and my friends, we were used to it, 
But for those coming in, it kind of gave a reputation for the town, which, well, it doesn't deserve today. Now, the vast majority of us, we went into the violence and the fighting, and people like me and most of my friends had never been and still have never been in a fight in our lives. But it was a reality that we had to deal with. And I remember a boy that I knew from a good family, a very middle class family, a very nice boy, a church going boy in fact, who once heard a story of another boy in the town who he didn't know who was after him. His crime, this nice boy, allegedly looking at him funny. And he didn't know who this boy was. So, for the weeks and the days and everything else that followed, all he did was think about this boy and whatever trouble could be coming his way. Now eventually, he found out who this boy was and he saw him on a train and he was filled with terror until the train pulled into the station and at the same time they stood up and the guy who was allegedly looking for him to administer a beating just said, hello, how are you? And he moved on. Now what I remember about that boy was how the thoughts of the possible beating dominated him and his whole world for those weeks. It was all he could think about. It was all he could talk about. When he was with his group of friends, it was all they discussed. The feelings of fear and terror that came with it. And I'm guessing he wasn't alone. For most of us, that would be exactly how we would be. If we thought that a difficult time, if we thought that a beating was coming our way and we didn't know when, we would be filled with terror. It would be with us when we wake up in the morning. It would be with us while we're in work. It would be with us when we go to sleep at night. It would dominate our thoughts, dominate our work, dominate our working lives, even dominate when we're with people. We might be focusing and talking to a person, but our heads would be thinking about this one event. Now, I've told you that story from 1980s and 1990s Merthyr, but in many ways, we could be talking the same about the situation that Paul found himself in in our reading in Acts today. Unlike this boy who saw the other guy on the train and just said hello, Paul really knew that as he was entering into Jerusalem, he was in for a kicking. He was in for a beating. He was due to be arrested, taken and dealt with. He knew that was coming his way. We heard in our readings last week about how prophecies came that Paul would be bound, that Paul would be beaten, and people were really warning him of the dangers that would come his way if he went to Jerusalem. But Paul knew from the Lord that that was his calling. And those other guys gave a warning from the Lord as well to help him prepare his way. And sure enough, in the second part of our reading today, we see it come to pass. We see Paul being arrested. We see him getting beaten. And we see him getting beaten in a far worse way than that guy in Merthyr would have beaten that boy up. We see him really, really hurt. The worst thing is, he knew it was coming. And the amazing thing is, he carried on despite the fact he knew that it was coming. And we may question how on earth he was able to do that. And we may question as well how on earth he was able to stay so positive. Because for me, the most amazing bit of this reading isn't so much the way that he took a beating, isn't so much that he took a kick in knowing it was coming. It was what he did with the other disciples and the apostles and the leaders in the church in Jerusalem before that happened. He went with them, he met with them, and he encouraged them. He told them good stories of faith. He told them good stories of what God was doing. He told them of how the Gentiles were being converted, and they were amazed at seeing what was happening. Now, if I was walking in Paul's sandals in those days, it would have been a very, very different experience. I would have gone into that room, seen those disciples and Paul and said, can I hide out here? Somebody's going to give me a kick in. I know it. It's going to be really bad. Can I hide out here? I don't want to say anymore. Will you keep me safe? Will you protect me? But Paul didn't. 
even though he knew this terrible time was coming, even though he knew this awful thing he was about to experience was about to become a reality, he told good news stories of God at work. He told stories of the good things that God was doing and he gave the glory to God. He gave glory to God. In the midst of the darkness, the light was shining. While trouble and sorrow was coming his way, he gave God the glory and he gave God the honour. He encouraged people and he kept things positive. Ways he could have focused on the darkness and the darkness that was coming his way, he focused on the light and the light that came from the Lord. And he focused on telling more people and enabling more people to hear the good news of Jesus, enabling more people to come to see that light, enabling more people come to know him. You know, there is a challenge for us in that because we are living in a dark world, as we know already. We are living in a world where horrible things are happening. We are living in a world where we are still seeing the effects of COVID and seeing the after effects of COVID. We are living in a world that because of COVID, so many more people are waiting for doctor's appointments and surgeries and all the fear that comes that way. We are living in a world where food prices are being pushed up. We are living in a world where energy prices are being put up. We are living in a world where people have so much fear about the future. We are living in a time of challenge to the church. We are living in a time where there is so much opportunity to focus on the darkness. And yes, as Paul did, we need to acknowledge the darkness. We need to know and acknowledge the real things that are coming our way. We need to know that life isn't all puppy dogs and ice cream and that darkness is a reality. But in the midst of all that darkness, we need to see the light of Christ shine. It is so easy to be consumed by the darkness that we forget about the light. We forget about the good things that God is doing. We forget about the good things that the Lord is doing right now. We forget that even at this time, in times of darkness for our world and for our church, people are still coming to faith. Miracles are still happening. Lives are still being transformed. And these are the stories that we need to hear. These are the stories that we need to tell each other. We need to encourage each other and build each other up, not pull each other down. We need to pray over the dark things. We need to lift the dark things to the Lord, but we need to do so with one thing in mind. God is sovereign. God is in control. God is still the God of creation and he can do all things. We lift everything to God knowing that he really is the governor. He really can do it all. And where's our focus can be put on the darkness? We need to focus on the light. We need to focus on Christ. Because in the context of this reading, that is exactly what Paul did. He focused on the light. He knew the darkness was there. He knew it was a reality, but that did not stop him focusing on the good things of God. Now, more than ever, we need to tell encouraging stories. Now, more than ever, as the darkness shines, we need the light to shine even brighter. Now, more than ever, we need to be encouraging of one another. Now, more than ever, we don't need to put each other down. Now, more than ever, we need to see what God is doing and respond to his call. Now, more than ever, we need to build each other up. Make it about the Lord and what he is doing and not about the darkness. Let's not give the devil the opportunity to have all the fun, but let us lift all things to God. And all of that, I guess, leads us to a very practical question. Namely, how on earth do we do it? You know, because it's very easy for me to stand here. It's very easy for me to look out and say, look at the light, not at the darkness. It's very easy for me to stand here in a real place of privilege and say all these things. How on earth do we make it that we're not obsessed with darkness because that is our reality? And what about Paul? 
Was it just that he was superhuman or something, that he was able to tell good news stories against the beating that was coming his way? One thing Paul had in abundance was the Lord's Spirit in him. And we need the Lord's Spirit with us as well. That as we go forward and we grapple with the things of darkness, we need the Lord's Spirit upon us. And when we meditate on the Lord, when we seek the Lord, when we allow the Lord to fill us with his spirit, then the Lord will pour out his peace upon us. And we are able, with a supernatural peace, to continue. I may have told the story before, but I'm going to tell it again of when I had an operation nearly 15 years ago. And on that particular day, I was petrified. I was so, so scared. I was walking about in this hostel ward wearing a horrific dressing gown and a particularly bad pair of um, slippers. And in the end, the nurses told me to just to go back to bed, go back, lie down and stay there. I was making a total nuisance of myself. I was shaking, I was trying to be sick. I was just all over the place. I was so consumed with fear. Anyway, I did the only thing that I could while I was there and that was pick up my Bible and so I read my Bible I picked up my Bible and I read it at that point actually I'd give myself a bit of a challenge before this operation to read all of the Bible something that had taken me years and years and years and at that moment I came to finish it and I always remember this wonderful beautiful South African nurse who was very wise who just came over to me as I was there and just said to me I'm just checking that you're reading the right parts. It turned out that she was a Christian and we had a little conversation about our faiths. Not a real in-depth conversation, not one that took away from her job or her role, but a conversation of just people talking as you do in a hospital. After that, I kind of prayed, I guess, and I just felt a supernatural peace come over me and I can't explain it any better. I just felt more at peace than I'd ever felt before. More at peace than I do here now. More at peace than at any time in my life. And when eventually they came for me for this operation, I was in such a good mood. I was laughing, I was telling jokes, I was having a lot of fun. They tried putting me in a lift that wasn't working because there was a fire alarm going off and I didn't care. I never felt such a sense of peace. And that peace was the peace of God's Spirit. That peace was God's Spirit just resting upon me. That supernatural peace, it was that light shining in the darkness. And that is the peace that is open to all of us. And that is the peace that right now that we need to seek. As the world and the church feel like perhaps they're losing their mind, as so many things that are going wrong, and we can focus on the things that are going wrong. We need the peace of the Lord to come on us. The peace of the Lord that came on me in that day. The peace of the Lord that was on Paul in this reading today. The peace of the Lord which enables us to have such peace that we can give thanks and focus on what is good, even in the midst of everything that is going wrong. The peace of the Lord which will rest upon us. We need peace. Now is a time for peace. Now is a time for the peace of the Lord to fall upon us and give us clarity. Now is a time to focus on his goodness. Now is a time to tell encouraging stories. And I want us, as we go into this week, with so many horrific things happening around us, so many horrific things on the news, to focus on the good things that the Lord is doing to focus on his goodness, to focus on him, to focus on God at work. And I wonder if in our daily lives we can share stories of what God is doing. I wonder if in our daily lives we can tell of his goodness. I wonder if in our daily lives we can share the wonderful things that God is doing and yet tell us here what God is doing as well. You know, in our new shoot, we haven't had a story of God at work for such a long time. We need continued stories to hear of God at work. Please email to us, office at 
tell the stories of God at work. Let us focus on what God is doing. Let us focus on the good, not the wrong. Let us focus on the good things of the Lord and give him the glory. And may that glory and that light overtake that darkness. May the light of Christ truly shine. That was where Paul was at in that reading today. And that is where we need to be as well. May the light of Christ shine in our hearts. May God have the glory. Let's pray. Father God, we give thanks for your word. And we give thanks for the Paul. We give thanks for his example. We give thanks that though he knew terrible things were on their way, through the power of your spirit, he was able to tell of your goodness. And we pray that we would do the same. And I pray now that where we are, we will be overcome with supernatural peace that comes through the gift of the Holy Spirit. The God Spirit, gentle as a dove, would rest upon us now. That we would trust in you and your goodness and your love for us. That even in these dark times, we would see your light shining. And that you would give us clarity in how to deal with these dark times. We pray that your light would just fall now. Your spirit would fall now. May we share good news stories of you at work. May we share stories of your goodness. Father, may we encourage each other. May we build each other up. And may we tell those who don't believe stories of your love. May more and more people come to know your name. And even in the midst of darkness, and especially because of darkness, you would build your kingdom in this place. Build your kingdom, we pray, as we give you the glory. Father, we praise your name. We give thanks to you for your goodness. Come, we pray. Amen.
God, I thank you um, that you have called us to be a body of believers, to be a body that grows together into maturity, up into you, Jesus, who are our head. And I thank you um, that you give us all sorts of guidance and instruction on how to live for your truth and to live in your light um, through your word. And Lord, we thank you for your word and we thank you for your spirit who brings us um, revelation from your word and helps us apply your word to our hearts and minds and understanding. And also that your spirit um, works in us to will and to act according to your pleasure. And Lord, um, at this time when there's so much going on um, in so many different ways, in the church and out of the church, um, God, we want to come to you afresh and lay our hearts before you and pray that you would um, be magnified, Lord, that you would uh, open us up to all that you want to do in us, that we would be responsible to you for our own walk, um, that we would allow you to scrutinize us if that's what you want to do. Um, I thank you that your word is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword and um, penetrates even to dividing joint and marrow, soul and spirit, and it judges the thoughts and attitudes of our hearts. I thank you, Lord, that everything is uncovered before the eyes of you to whom we must give account. And Lord, in this season where the church is looking at all sorts of things and there's disagreement and discord, Lord, I pray. I pray, God, that we would be um, accountable to you for ourselves, Lord, and that you would help us to be um, compassionate and um, bear with one another in love. Um, I thank you for Ephesians 4, where um, you urge us to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which we have received with all humility and gentleness with patience, bearing with one another in love and eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. I thank you, Lord, that you um, urge us to live a life worthy of your calling and I thank you that your calling is irrevocable um, and I thank you that it is glorious and that you call us into this beautiful relationship with you, the, with Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Um, with the intimacy that you share and the love and the affection that is in the Trinity, you call us into this dance with you. And God, you call us as individuals and as a body, and I pray that you would help us to, um, to support one another. As uh, Ephesians 3 talks about um, every, um, about your body being built up, um, every with every supporting ligament doing its work, that so every every aspect of your body would do would do the work that you have ordained it for. And Lord, I thank you that you we are diverse, that you call us to different functions, that you gift us in different ways. Um, and I pray, God, that you'd help us to complement each other and um, to encourage each other and affirm each other and to see each other as you see us. Um, I pray that you'd help us to support our leaders, Lord, um, to pray for our leaders, um, God, to lift them up to you daily um, as they seek to as they seek to lead us, um, God. That and that and that for those that we come into contact with, that we would see people as you see them, um, God, to help us to be encouragers and comforters and. Um, caregivers and all that you would have us be, all that supports and nurtures and blesses. Um, I thank you that you are such a gracious God and that you are compassionate and that you are kind and that you are forgiving. Um, and I thank you that as far as the east is from the west, so far have you separated, uh, taken our sin from us. Lord, I thank you for the, um, the image of the sea rolling in on the shore again and again, just washing away our unrighteousness as Jesus has taken it for us on the cross. 
And Lord, I pray that you would help us to live in the truth of all that you have ordained for us. Um, and Lord, as we work through these passages in Acts, I pray that you'd help us to live um, in accordance with your truth, Lord, to be, um, to be revived by your spirit and through your word, um, to be excited and to, be, um, to have our, the eyes of our hearts open to all that you want to do in us and through us as your body here on earth, that your kingdom would come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, we pray that this church in um, Aberystwyth and beyond, Lord, would be a blessing to you and that you would be glorified through it. In all aspects of it, God, would you be glorified, we pray. Help us to be your body on earth, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, our service has almost come to an end and I would just like to say a massive thank you to everyone who has taken part in our worship and I just I just want to say again it has been such a privilege to be able to worship with you today and to share our service with you and we really do pray that you have been able to meet with God and to hear from him today. In just a moment we're going to sing our final song but before we do I just want to tell you a little bit about the different ways in which we um, would like to pray together each week and a little bit about our life groups. One of the things as you know if you're a regular here is that we love to pray for people and if you would like us to pray for you then we would love to do that and we can do that in a number of different ways. Um, firstly you can email us, send us your prayer requests to prayer at stmikes.net and we will pray for you that way. Uh, we can pray for you over the phone. If you give us a call in the week, then we would be happy to make an appointment with you to have a chat and a pray over the phone. Or if you would like us to pray for you uh, in person over Zoom, then we would love to do that too. Send us an email or give us a call in the week and we will arrange a time uh, to do that with you. Uh, if you like praying and you would like to join one of our prayer groups, then that would be uh, great too. Uh, we pray every day of the week at 8 a.m. via Zoom. Um, and we also have prayer groups that meet at different times during the week, both in person and online. So if you would like to know more about those groups, then please do uh, send us an email to office at stmikes.net or call the office and we'll give you all the details that you need to know about how to join. Here in Aberystwyth, like many churches, uh, one of the ways that we approach our discipleship is to invite people uh, to be uh, part of what we call life groups. And so if you're local to ABBA and you would like to join a life group, then please do get in touch and we'll hook you up with a local group. But we are also looking to start an online life group. A life group is a small group uh, where we come together to pray and to worship and to, to read the Bible and to just support one another in our discipleship and the different things that life chucks at us from time to time. And so a life group can be just a really good way of connecting with other Christians. It's a great way of exploring our faith and growing in our faith together. And so if you are not already part of a life group and you would like to do this online with other people, please do give us a shout and let us know um, and then we can arrange the times and days and stuff like that. But, but now, as we uh, begin to bring our worship to a close, let's join together in our final song.
Well, it has been lovely to worship with you today. And as I said before, we really do pray that you've been able to meet with God and that you have felt his presence with you today. We love joining with you for worship on Sundays, but there are loads of other ways that you can connect with us here um, as well. So please, please do keep an eye on all of our social media and our website where you'll find details about what's going on each week and uh, all the information about how you can give financially to the life and the work and the mission of the churches here is also on our website and the links for that are alongside this video. But now, as we head out into this new week, let's do so with God's blessing. Through his death and his resurrection, Christ has set us free. Therefore, may we live with boldness, courage and conviction. May we love freely, give generously and pray passionately. And may we entrust all that we are to God, for we belong to him and him alone. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those that you love and pray for today and always. Amen. Take care, have a good week and we'll see you soon. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.